Good morning, everybody. And um, I'll try not to be cowed by all the luminaries in this room and try to uh, charge forth on this presentation today. Uh, my presentation is uh, going to be in this theme of technology that will blow your mind, and not so much about Health Navigator, but perhaps about some of the companies with whom we work, because I want to highlight some of the great work that they're doing. First, a couple introductory slides. Health Navigator is a clinical content company, which means we write the text that appears inside a book rather than publishing the book. So we license clinical content. And we license this to telemedicine companies, digital health companies, companies that are building chatbots and health bots to help power their systems. And we've been doing this for 20 years. We've been working in the telehealth space, and we are basically dedicated and passionate about having high quality clinical content. And so we have an active, long view approach to curated content. Um, earlier today, we heard about how this needs to affect me versus not me. And so for the perspectives of the people in the audience here today, um, from a me standpoint, if you've got a patient perspective, um, our conversation today is about triage and how we provide tools for that diagnosis, what are the possible causes of my symptoms today? Care advice, what is evidence-based relevant care? If you're a physician in the audience today, um, perhaps from a me perspective, we're talking about documentation, uh, like soap notes, we're talking about decision support and aftercare instructions. If you're a developer or an IT person, we are gonna be presenting content that's hosted on Microsoft Azure, it's delivered as an application programming inter interface on a RESTful web service, and we use Microsoft SQL to store our data. It's encrypted, state, stateless, and no PHI. And lastly, for those of you that are into machine learning and artificial intelligence, uh, we do do natural language processing, which we'll demonstrate today. We have a clinical vocabulary. We use decision trees and explainable AI. And basically what we have is a knowledge graph, this relational database of content. Staying on the topic of AI tools and clinical vocabulary, um, I couldn't find the right quote, so I made one up. And, and so it says, to be effective, artificial intelligence systems require an ontologic model, a clinical vocabulary to describe, relate, and communicate clinical concepts. And as we hear speakers talk this today and uh, tomorrow, you see this concept of uh, trying to communicate with the patient and use artificial intelligence, but unless there's a standardized vocabulary for what we do, the beginning, the middle, and the end of the, the conversation that replicates what a doctor can do or a good nurse can do, uh, we're not gonna be successful. So even if you take a single word, just a single clinical concept like diarrhea, there is data behind that word that we need to actually use in any sort of artificial intelligence system. And so there's a course, there's a question, and even how you ask the question, you can ask it from a pronoun standpoint in terms of second person or third person. There are synonyms for that. There's translation into different languages. There's medical coding of that particular term diarrhea in terms of SNOMED or ICD-10. And then there's other metadata that we should be storing to allow us to do re reporting, analytics, and workflow as well. So Microsoft, um, and this is a, a silent video, so if we can kick it on. Um, this is a, Microsoft is actually one of our partners, and uh, Microsoft uh, has built a health bot. If you do a search on the web for Microsoft and Health Navigator, you'll see, you can see it. And so you can type in words like, I am pooping a lot, and I have some tummy pain, and hopefully it recognizes it correctly. But what it does is it actually uses our natural language processing engine and converts the universe of patient utterances or physician speech or nurse speech into one of 480 uh, different uh, possible chief complaints. So we're converting text to data to use for artificial intelligence. Let's stay on the topic of clinical vocabulary. MD Live is one of the um, successful and innovative companies for uh, telemedicine in the United States, led by Rich Berner and Lyle Berkowitz, or Dr. Berkowitz. And they use our clinical vocabulary. And so it's important to talk about data. And so this is actually a study that we just looked at of 454,000 patient visits over the last uh, 12 months just through telemedicine. So these are telemedicine counters that MD Live has performed. And so we asked a simple question. What's the beginning of the middle medical encounter? What's the chief complaint? Why do people use telehealth services? And that's actually significantly different than the question at the end where you're asking what the diagnosis was. 
And so we looked and created histograms of, of the top 25 reasons for uh, pediatric patients or adult patients. And then we actually looked at that from a cumulative standpoint. Staying, on, staying with MD Live for just a moment, um, this is an interesting study that we did with MD Live where we asked the question, how accurate is the diagnosis engine that um, Health Navigator uh, provides to MD Live and other partners? And what we found was is that 95% of the time, based solely on the physician's documentation of the chief complaint and the subjective area of the chart, we could pr accurately predict the correct diagnosis that the doctor used. Now this is based on a fairly small sample size of 12,000 patients, which is pretty good actually, over the last eight months. Hot off the press as of August. We're gonna shift continents here to another partner. And if you were ATA this past year, you might have met uh, Dr. Davis Muzinguzi and Dr. John Mark Bonica. They're both from Uganda. And they have a long-standing health healthcare organization that they deliver healthcare to but they're using technology to improve the care that they deliver. And the type of technology they're using is actually leveraging health information content from Health Navigator, and they've built an application called Marembi, which means in the language, peace of mind, which is lovely. And they're delivering this technology actually through Facebook Messenger. So this is a Facebook Messenger app that you see on the left-hand side there. Yeah, I'm not going to go into that for what, what that means in um, Uganda where hip is maybe not the same thing, but yes. <laughs> so, yes, confidentiality is important, and I don't have a direct answer for you there today. Uh, the HIPAA regulations are U.S. regulations, and so how they want to approach that I think is their choice at this point. In any case, so as we move through this, They've got a health bot that they've created, which is accessible to the population there. They ask questions about that patient. And at the end of that encounter, what they do is they actually allow the patient to talk with a doctor as part of this process and deliver health information as well. And then what they do is they take that information, that data that which was accumulated along that health bot path, pass it into the doctor's SOAP note pre-populate the note to save the doctor time and improve quality. And they also pass it into a diagnosis engine as well to suggest to the doctor possible top causes for the symptoms. Um, we heard earlier today about TitoCare. TitoCare is a partner of Health Navigator as well. And um, they're doing some innovative things um, in the United States um, at the present time. <clears throat> and what they've got is a set of devices which a patient can use in the home or you can use as part of a telemedicine experience. But how does a patient know which device to use? So if a patient says that my ear is hurting a lot or my, I've got left earache, how does it know to tell you then to use the right device? And so they've actually built into their system an NLP technology using our content, which then can prompt the patient to select the correct de device through the knowledge mapping that we've done. They then capture the information from the patient, they capture the information from the device, pass both the subjective information and the exam information to the doctor, the telemedicine doctor, for later use. A remarkable and an innovative path. I'm gonna wrap up with one more presentation here today. And uh, this one here is from um, some development partners of ours called Macadamian. They're actually based out of Canada. So this is a proof of concept that they built using um, um, Alexa technology to build a skill. And so earlier when uh, Bill was talking about using natural language processing, they've actually done it using this uh, concept of uh, our clinical vocabulary and asking the questions. I will tell you that everything that you're seeing is actually automated, at least on the Alexa side. So let's watch this. And this is with audio. Health Navigator. Hello Peggy. Tell me about the symptoms or problems that are troubling you the most. Use your own words. It hurts when I urinate and I'm urinating a lot. Let's first talk about the urination pain. How much does it hurt? Tell me on a scale of 0 to 10. 5. When did this happen or start? How long has this been going on? Two days ago. 
How do you feel? Is it getting better or worse? Or staying the same? It's about the same. Okay. I am going to ask you a number of important questions. Your answers will help me give you the best advice and health information. Are you having pain in any of these areas? Abdomen or stomach pain, back pain, flank pain? No. Do you have any of these symptoms? Blood and urine, chills, fever, urination frequency. Urination frequency. Do you have any of these symptoms? Urine unusual color, urine incontinence, urine retention, vaginal discharge? No. Do you have any of these symptoms? Vomiting? No. Based on your responses, it does not seem you need emergency care. Most people with similar symptoms can safely make an appointment to see their doctor. You should see your doctor today or tomorrow. Or talk to your doctor within 24 hours. Okay, Alexa, call the health clinic. Alexa, start health navigator. Hello, Mike. Tell me about the symptoms or problems that are troubling you the most. Use your own words. Please tell me about your condition. I started vomiting this morning and I have a sore throat. Which one is bothering you the most between vomiting and throat pain? Vomiting. How many times have you vomited? Four. How long has this been going on? Six hours. How do you feel? Is it getting better or worse? Or staying the same? I think, I think it's getting worse. How bad is your throat pain? How much does it hurt? Tell me on a scale of zero to ten. Three. Okay. I am going to ask you a number of important questions. Your answers will help me give you the best advice and health information. Do you have an injury to any of these areas? Head injury, stomach injury? No. Do you have any of these symptoms? Confused, cough, diarrhea, dizziness? Dizziness. Do you have any of these symptoms? Spinning tilting feeling, stool black color, trouble breathing, urination pain? I'm having trouble breathing. Do you have any of these symptoms? Vomit looks like coffee grounds. Alexa, open. Thank you very much. So um, what we saw in this, and usually I start my presentations off with this, but I usually talk about the anatomy of a medical encounter, which is there's a beginning where you ask the chief complaint. There's a middle where we ask these tell us more questions. How long have you had this? How bad is it? What are their symptoms? And then there's an end where you're asking about you're delivering some sort of outcome, which could be triage, it could be diagnosis, it could be care advice, it could be, it could be comfort and other things like that. And so what we're, what we're doing here and what you saw in this last presentation was the beginning, middle, and the end replicated from kind of a medical encounter to a digital health world. And uh, so that's some interesting things and I hope you enjoyed the presentation today. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> We've heard about uh, cloud-based robots and natural language processing and decision trees. So you're, we're, we're seeing a landscape in the home that is full of an internet of devices. And so whether it's speaking to Alexa or whether it's biometric devices that are communicating to the network, whether it's the robots that are collecting data out there on the edge, there are a lot of devices collecting a lot of data through different systems. What's the platform or the technology that's going to really connect all these things so that they can work together, which is going to be crucial for a comprehensive approach to care and also generating the data that's going to be necessary for this to be a successful approach? Well, that was a, uh, that's a great question and a complex question as well, so <laughs> thank you. Uh, maybe over lunch we'll really get into that. The, um, you know, there's a, there's a, one of the challenges that we face in the United States, in fact, in the world, is that all healthcare is local. And so we have, uh, you've got companies like Epic, which now is uh, providing probably 50% of the electronic health records in the United States. So that's a move towards that sort of thing. But having said that, there's more fragmentation and disconnects than there are actually connects to this information. So I'm not certain if I have a perfect solution towards that. Um, I think that moving towards standardized vocabularies is an important thing. I think that moving towards standardized ways of moving data from point to point, whether it's fire or other systems like that, is part of the solution as well. Thank you. 
Hi, I have a question. Um, I have a horrible accent, and so my own Siri doesn't get me 90% of the time. Um, what happens with people with dialects and accents and you know different languages on a system like this? That's a great question. So um, it's important to separate uh, when it comes to uh, voice. Uh, there's a, important to separate voice to text versus text to data. And so you've got voice to text agents like Siri or uh, Alexa or the Google Home, that sort of thing. We don't do that. Um, but instead, what we do instead is that we do text to data. So if you give us text, we then convert it into chief complaints or other sorts of meaningful information to use part of that. So we don't actually face that part, but I know that our voice partners certainly do. Good question, thank you. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. You know, with all, with all due respect, I feel like those Alexa questions seem somewhat set up and you know, from a clinical perspective as a physician, I can already imagine how uh, they could easily make a misdiagnosis or spend a lot of time uh, trying to figure something out that can be e easily answered by a physician uh, by answering, by asking less questions. Um, you know, I, I find it very difficult that someone like this could distinguish between someone who has symptoms consistent with a bronchitis, but they actually have a PE, for example. Um, and I, you know, there's, there's just something about this that doesn't ring true that it's actually, um, the technology is actually at that point where it's viable. Thank you for the question. I'd love to demonstrate our content to you further to show you at least how far we've gotten and the things that we actually haven't achieved yet as well. Um, this is a difficult area. Um, we certainly do not wish in any way to replace physician diagnosis, but we certainly want to be consumer friendly. And as we heard earlier today from uh, Dr. Phillips, and as we all know, patients right this moment are looking for three things. And they're looking for, um, if I have a symptom, what are the causes? Do I need to see a doctor? And what's basic care advice? And as a medical healthcare system, and I consider myself as part of that, we're not always responding to that as quickly as possible. And patients want their care sometimes hot and now. They want the information today, right away. And so we have to find a way to meet them halfway and then pass that information to the doctor so that a good doctor then can answer this and actually do the, do the right thing. Maybe the last question was Brad. Uh, this may be a bit of a more of a rhetorical question, and I'll try and make it quick. But how do we address issues of implicit bias, especially when we're creating technology in one, one culture or one socioeconomic status or what have you? It's something that we're having even a hard time addressing with our trainees, our residents, our students, even our fellow faculty members, in ensuring that we're addressing implicit bias in care. And thinking about the whole AI world, I, I'm just looking for a sense of how that gets done. And I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get the question at the beginning. Think about implicit bias. Whether I'm a, whether it, whenever you create technology, it reflects the values and implicit bias of those who create it. Hmm, that's, so that's what I meant. Anyway. Yeah, that's true. Um, so there's certainly a, a tendency towards that, and I think that some of that's addressed simply through lots of testing. We've got a partner that uses our, for example, natural, natural language pr processing in a call center setting with regular human people on a quarter million patients a year. And then we actually have physicians and consumers that actually read that text and compare it and then map, make certain the mappings are done correctly so that we can start to pick up cultural as well as regional variations in the way the patients say things. So, great questions. Thank you so much, Dave, for the amazing talk. <laughs> Thank you, Mel. <laughs>